What's the word, y'all? One game elimination basketball games are the best thing to happen to humanity. You cannot convince me otherwise. Today's games weren't as good as yesterday's games, but the, the ad is stake that, like, if you lose this game, your season is over, just made me glue to the TV a little bit more, um, even though the first game was a blowout since the very beginning, and then the second game was a blowout until the last eight minutes or so of the game. Regardless, I actually wrote a ton of notes in today's video. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Remember, I'm just a guy with a microphone that watched some basketball today. You might disagree with everything I said, and that is completely okay. Now, I have this tendency, and I did this when I was in school as well. You know, when you're in class, jotting notes. I used to just write things down and be like, future me will remember what this means. One of my notes says, miss me, M-I-S-S-M-E. And it was with the, the Hornets game. I don't know what I, <laughs> I wanted to bring it up in today's video, but I have no idea what M-I-S-S-M-E means. So I'm, I'm getting rid of it. Let's get to the first game because honestly, I was a little bit disappointed with the outcome. Not about the winner, but just like the effort level from the Charlotte Hornets. Um, it's just a lot of things. I want to give a lot of credit to the Atlanta Hawks. They got a huge game ahead of them against Cleveland, and that one's definitely going to be more difficult than this one, especially if Jared Allen is going to play. So I want to give them all the credit. Actually, I wrote this down because I looked it up myself. Um, a good DeAndre Hunter game can really put a team over the top. When he shoots over 50% from the field, they are 14-7. and seven. That is great. Clint Capella for the last two weeks have looked like the last year's version of Clint Capella, and that's, that's amazing because in this game, James Ray go through a lot of different licks at Trey Young, and that's one of the reasons why Trey Young struggled from the field. But when you you have Clint Capella being as dominant as he was today. All of that is void, right? Um, Clint Capella was getting the ball in the roll and not just going like, oh, I must dunk ball. He was like, let me find my shooters and find a DeAndre Hunter and find a Kevin Herter and find a Bogey and Gallinari hitting turnaround jump shots with the slick bag of hair. They deserve this win, but they got to prepare for the next one. I want to show them a lot of love, but I would much rather talk about the Charlotte Hornets because I think this is a very pivotal offseason for them. First of all, I am extremely disappointed with the effort level that I saw from the man. Um, during the broadcast, they were talking about, oh, the Charlotte Hornets lost to the Indiana Pacers by a lot in last year's play-in, and James Borrego printed out this big old poster for them to have in a locker room to motivate them for this year. And then they lost by what, two more, po two less points this year? Congratulations on the progression, y'all. Are you serious? Was the season not on the line tonight from the very beginning of this game, from the early tip-off? This team had no urgency. And I'm like, do you not want to do what you you want to do? Like, I was so confused. And I was uh, going through Twitter, and I found this stat, which was so crazy to me. Um, and I guess y'all probably know this as well because, again, you're watching this in the future, and it probably has went viral at this point. But in the 2016-2017 season, the Charlotte Hornets finished 11th. Then they finished 10th. Then they finished 9th. Then they finished 10th. Then they finished 10th. And then they finished 10th. But this, hey, this was the first season in the last six that they have above 500 records. So that's something you can say, hey, we did that. But it still has not been good enough. And I keep thinking about this offseason for them because, again, like I said, this is very, very pivotal. Now, I'm not a guy that actually has a job in front office. I know it's a lot more difficult than me doing a 2K rebuild. But there are some things that I see within this team that I think is a very obvious, like, getting a center is something that they need to do now it's a lot easier said than done because I I would guess that they at least tried to do it at the deadline and they couldn't figure out what that was Miles Turner was was rumored to be um a, a part of them especially with the Pacers trying to sell at the moment and they didn't get that but we might have seen the last game of PJ Washington in Charlotte again this is just speculation even though he had been good for them this season he's one of the few people on that on that team within that organization that cares about the defensive side of the ball but he feels like a guy that has some value on the market Gordon Hayward should never suit up again for the Charlotte Hornets it is time to get rid of the Gordon Hayward contract when he plays it's cool it's nice but that's like a big question mark at this point and you paid him a lot of money and with the Russell Westbrook deal lingering above this franchise it's hard for me as somebody on the outside looking in uh, uh, to see that potential trade partner and not be interested in it and I'm not talking about Russell Westbrook being a part of the team I'm talking about Russell Westbrook coming into this team getting rid of the longevity that is Gordon Hayward's contract and buying out Russell Westbrook and boom you don't have to worry about Gordon Hayward you don't have to worry about the money that you have promised him and then you take into consideration Miles Bridges Miles Bridges is a is going to be one of the top free agents in this year's draft it's like Bradley Beal who what I sus I'm suspecting is going to stay in Washington because they can offer him a, a big amount of money um Zach Levine which I'm praying. Hey, Zach, if you watch this video, come on, stop playing. I'm praying that Zach Levine stays in Chicago. Then after that, it's like Miles Bridges on restricted free agency. It's uh, DeAndre uh, Aiden in restricted free agency. There's a lot of decent restricted free agents. And when you have Portland, Orlando, Indiana, and Detroit, all with cap space? Mm, 
mm, Charlotte, um, you're going to have to make a, a big decision this offseason. And then it was a report today um, from Jake from Bleach Report. Jake Fisher. I, I might be pronouncing your name wrong again. I'm, I'm bad at reading. Miles Bridges is expected to command a maximum salary that can total a five years, $173 million this summer. And, and Miles Bridges was a borderline all-star. He's a most improved player candidate. On my ballot, he was top seven. I didn't, I didn't put it in no particular order, but he was top seven. Um, one of the came-out-of-nowhere stories, I guess you can call it that, and he averaged over 20 points per game, and he was really, really good. But $173 million is a ton. I guess if you are going to give him $173 million, you're looking at the progression from last year to this year and say, hey, why can't he get better? And I guess that's, a, I mean, he could. He definitely could get better. He can go from a borderline all-star to a bona fide all-star. But $173 million is a ton. And if you don't give him that, there might be some teams out there thirsty to do it. So you have to figure out, is he worth that? Is he a, a sign-and-trade opportunity? Because I personally believe that Detroit is going to go balls to the wall this offseason based on nothing at all, but with him being a Michigan guy, and them wanting more wing depth and having, like, good wings that can score the ball and do other things and him being with K kind of them. I'm just saying there's going to be teams out there to throw him that offer sheet and you have to make that decision whether or not you match it or not. Now, the good thing about the Charlotte Hornets situation is that in NBA history there has not been a ton, or not history, but in recent NBA history, there has not been a ton of people that have signed an offer sheet that the other team didn't match. So that's probably a thumbs up, but it's still a ton of money to potentially wrap into a guy that you're not completely sure if you'll hit stardom. But the Gordon Hayward mood has to be a thing. Finding a center has to be a thing. Plumley, man, he gives it his all. One thing you can say about Plumley, he's he's playing hard out there, but he he's definitely in the bottom five, bottom ten when it comes to starting centers in the NBA, in the NBA. And you need something better than that. This is a team that doesn't give a damn about the defensive side of the ball. You need somebody to anchor that. And you need your star players in LaMelo Ball and Miles Bridges, if you bring him back, to care about that side of the ball. They have the tools. You cannot tell me Miles Bridges can't be a well above average defender. You can't tell me that LaMelo Ball can't be a well above average defender. His brother's one of the, the best perimeter defenders in the entire league. He has to be able to lock in on that side of the ball, and he has to be able to not get frizzled. And I'm talking about LaMelo and Miles Bridges because you know what happened to Miles Bridges today. He let the emotions get the best of him, and he got ejected. And I liked what he said in the postgame interview. You know what I'm saying? He took accountability for it, and he's ready for whatever the consequences may be. But still, a, a, a Super, super important offseason for them. I, I think that they should be looking at their coaching options this offseason. James Borrego has been there since 2018. And though he hasn't had the perfect roster to put together something great, you have to get the urgency out of your team. You have to. I'm not saying fire him. But if I'm in the front office of that team, I might be interviewing some people. You know what I'm saying? It's the offseason. Why not? And like, I watch what the Spurs did in the last quarter of the game where they were losing about 20 points against the Pelicans I look at that and then look at what the Charlotte Hornets did in that same situation where in the third quarter they were getting killed and I look at the young Spurs team be like that's the type of urgency you should have it doesn't matter if you're down by 20 if this game determines if you play another game you have to give it give more and more and more and they didn't do it shout out to the Hawks for basically taking all of that shout out to the Hawks fans for smothering them so shout out to that let's get to the second game the Pels Oh, man, the Pels. Now, they got to go against the Clippers, and that's going to be a matchup for sure, for sure. But I, I can't help but to watch this Pelicans team and just think about the future. And the future for me is like next season when Zion is there. The starting lineup of CJ, Brandon Ingram, Herb, Zion, and Jonas Valanciunas is going to be one of the best five-man lineups next year. Today, they got a total of 14 total bench points, and 12 of those are Jose Alvarado. We're going to talk about Jose Alvarado because he was huge today. He was a, he's a big defender today. Um, and I just keep thinking about the future. I don't know if they win the next game against the Clippers. They should be very um, proud of themselves the way the season has gone. They talked about it a million times in the broadcast. I'm starting off 1-13. One, one it was on pace to be the worst team in NBA history, and the fact that they're here one game away from being the eighth seed is, a, is great. Um, and, and they played a really good game, man. Herb Jones, I've been singing his praises since the since Summer League. Since No, 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 not Summer League. Since early in the season, because I don't actually have any memories of Herb Jones in Summer League. I don't even know if he played in Summer League. But since the early, early stages of the, the NBA season, I've sung the praise of Herb Jones, and to see him do this on the biggest stage in a win-or-go-home game was amazing. When he is hitting his shots, look out, NBA, because it's going to be a little bit uh, lethal. You know what I'm saying? He has... He has Matisse Stiebel type potential on the defensive side of the ball, but he has a respectable three-point shot, or he projects to have a respectable three-point shot. And you add that with Zion, with B.I. and C.J., it's amazing. And I love the fact 
that they don't need a point guard. You know, CJ could be the facilitator on possessions. Brandon Ingram could be the facilitator on possessions. And Zion, you're going to get point Zion a lot next year. CJ went into halftime with 27 points and one assist and one rebound. He ended with seven assists. Second half, he started to facilitate more because the Spurs threw a different look on him when he was he was at the ball in isolation. This is a good game for Coach Willie Green and for the Pelicans fans. Um, I'm excited to watch you go against the Clippers because this is going to be a dogfight. It's going to be a, a, a game of good coaching. You, you, whoever coaches better is probably going to win that game. But this one was a tough one. Um, DeJounte Murray and Keldon Johnson shot 11 for 39 um, in this game. And those are your two most impactful offensive players. It got to the point where Willie Green and company were going under screens on everything. And DeJounte had a, a tough time when he was guarded by Herb. He had a tough time when he was guarded by Jose Alvarado, who on the broadcast they were talking about he takes inspiration from Patrick Beverly. And I kind of feel that, other than like the super-duper shenanigans. I feel that. It's a small, gritty, get under your skin a little bit. You know what I'm saying? He going to reach. He going to do all the crazy. I, I feel that for sure. Um, but something that I didn't know if they said on the broadcast whatsoever is that DeJounte Murray hadn't played basketball like a week and a half, almost two weeks. And I got it right here from a report. He lost seven pounds in this time. He, he got sick. You know what I'm saying? He got sick and he lost seven pounds and he didn't look like himself. He um, And it's unfortunate they don't get a lot of nasty televised games. He was an all-star this season, which is a dub, but they don't get a lot of nasty televised games. So a lot of people might see this performance from DeJounte Murray and think this is what he is, but he's definitely not. He's definitely better than what you saw today. He he desperately needs to improve his jump shooting, and that's got to be the number one thing on his priority list this offseason because you can't get into super important games where it's one game eliminations or a seven-game playoff series and have a team go under on screens, under on screens, and under on screens and be the best player on the team. You have to be able to make those teams uh, work a little bit harder than that. And they didn't really have to because they were going under. And Kelvin Johnson had been a 40% three-point shooter all season long. He just had a stinker of a game, which which happens. You know what I'm saying? It happens. It so happened to happen in a one-game elimination. But you do see some bright things from Devin Vassell. I don't know, not out of nowhere, but he had put up uh, 23 points and seven made threes. I didn't really realize that this was like the third youngest team in the entire NBA. And when you put that into perspective, this was a, a very – impactful and important and good season for the Spurs because you got to think about it this way last year they had DeJounte Murray they had Rudy Gay and a couple other vets on their team and what was the outcome of last season 10th seed 10th seed play in elimination this season they had the third youngest roster in the entire NBA what was the outcome 10th seed eliminating the playoff game or playing game looks like a W to me you they lost some impactful veteran leadership in the locker room and everything and they went out and performed exactly the same with the younger roster. I see that as a W. I see that as progression from Keldon. I see that as progression as DeJounte and all the other cats out there. So I would say this is a successful season. I hope that this isn't the last time we see Greg Popovich as a head coach. But even then, I would love for Pop to like enjoy retirement eventually. But like he seems like a dude. This just loves to work, and he loves the game of basketball, you know? So I wouldn't be surprised if he's back next season. But I hope, for their sake, they get a little bit of luck, man. I hope they get a little bit of luck in the lottery. Because this is not a team that rebuilds like the other ones. This is not a team that's going to bottom out. They just never will do that um, intentionally. They're always going to be a team that's going to put their their best foot forward, especially you got Greg Popovich. You don't want to waste a Greg Popovich year. They're going to always put their best foot forward. And we haven't seen that style of a rebuild really work out recently. Um, it usually is a team bottoming out a little bit, whether it be uh, bottoming out to get DeAndre Aiden and boom, in a couple of years, you're the number one seed or oh, the Miami Heat signed free agents and stuff like that. So we're talking about the Spurs, a smaller market team that typically doesn't sign free agents, but also doesn't want to bottom out. Their rebuild is going to be a lot different than other teams. And I'm excited to see what it looks like in like two to three years. Yeah, I got a couple things in here from my notes that I legit don't. Don't know. I don't know why I put it in my notes. I don't even know what game this is attached to. It's like in the middle of both. I have no idea, man. Um, but we got a couple more games coming up. Uh, Friday, we have the battle of the eighth seed for the eighth seed. Atlanta versus Cleveland. Pelicans versus Clippers. I don't really want to make any predictions there. But these two games, they better be. Um, what am I? My old teacher used to use the words um, barn burners. Yeah, he's barn burners. He would come to our freshman B basketball games, and if they were good games, he'd be like, oh, you played in a barn burner yesterday. And I, I, I remember Googling it in high school, but I don't remember what it means. And I refuse to Google it now, but I'm going to use it. Hopefully these games are barn burners. Contest Clues tells me, like, good games. Close games? Mm. Either way, hopefully you enjoyed these, and hopefully uh, the next two doesn't disappoint. We will do a video of us recapping those, hopefully. 
Um, I, me and my fiance have a procedure for our baby. I like to give, keep y'all updated just in case you go a couple days without a video. We have a procedure, um, actually tomorrow morning at 6 AM. So I'm recording this late and anyway, um, and that procedure might induce labor. Kenny, the dad might be coming in tomorrow, hot coming in tomorrow. So if that is the case, uh, then yeah, be looking out for no videos. I'll keep you updated on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter.